I've owned my 94 MR2 for a little over three years now. And at one point early on, it went from a weekend sports car to an everyday driver. In those early days of using the car as my daily, I got pretty familiar with the uh, quirks and features of this specific MR2 on a personal level. Now, this list is just for fun, and I actually had a bit of a difficult time coming up for cons uh, for owning an SW20 MR2. Uh, my experience with owning this car has been phenomenal, and it's just been net positive all around. Uh, so I can't say that I hate any part of it, but for the purposes of education, I just came up with some points. Uh, just don't flame me in the comments if I miss something. I'm not an MR2 snob, and I definitely don't know everything. So I'm just speaking from my specific experience and uh, the experience of my friends. So the first uh, pro of SW20 ownership is the noises. It is the top thing on my list. Of course, every car makes noises, and I don't think the SW20s are really that distinct. I mean, it's a turbo 2-liter 4-cylinder. Uh... And it doesn't really rival the sound of any other 2-liter turbo 4-cylinder. I think they're relative, it's, it's relatively on the same spectrum of sound. Uh, the placement of the engine, though, is what really makes it stand out. The placement of the engine is right behind your head. And, you know, it really feels like it's just strapped to your back. And even better than that, the turbo is on the cabin side of that engine. So it can make for some, you know, really great swooshy noises when you're driving around. Uh, that's a pretty simple pro I think we can all get behind, being able to turn off your radio and just listen to the car. It's, it's really a nice feeling. Uh, the second pro that I have here is the interior of the car. I recently uh, watched an interview with James May where he talks about how driving a beautiful car he considers like an act of charity because only the people outside of the car get to actually enjoy the beauty of that car and how he thinks that there's not enough focus on the interior of a car and how that makes you feel. Of course, 90s JDM cars are far from like beautiful. They're not, you know, you're not getting a Pagani level interior out of, you know, a 1994 MR2. The MR2 interior is extremely minimalist, uh, which I have a tendency of liking because it it allows for better immersion into driving the car when when you get into an SW20 there's nothing to distract you it's completely focused on the driving experience i think that the beauty comes with the immersion of driving the car uh when you strip away all the unnecessary uh, like i said you can't expect much from a 90s JDM sports car uh but if you go into it not expecting a lot and knowing that the car is going to be very driving focused, then I think that you'll get everything out of it that you hope. Uh, like I said, it's not going to be, you're not going to have multiple wood grains or anything like that. You're going to get plastic. You're going to get likely a cracked dash. If you're lucky like me, you won't have that. And uh, hopefully all the pieces are there. But luckily there's not a lot of pieces there in the first place. So it's, uh, I don't know, I think it's just one of my favorite parts about the car. The third pro for my SW20 is a bit polarizing for most people. Uh, I actually love that my SW20 is right-hand drive. Uh, there's a lot of hate and there's a lot of in uh, misinformation regarding right-hand drive cars. And it somehow evolved into people believing that you need to like relearn how to drive stick. Or you need to have a million dollars in order to insure the thing. And it's just not the case. And... Most people will just come up with some other bullshit excuse if you mention this to them. But in all honesty, I've never had a cooler ownership experience than owning a right-hand drive car. I mean, the whole point in the car community and car shows and ownership in general is for people to be able to ask questions and to be able to talk about your car, right? If you want questions and you want to you know, pull up to a car meet and have people wonder about your car, I promise a right-hand drive car is going to be the way to go. Uh, there are many car shows that I've pulled up to that are in public spaces like parks and, and that sort of thing. Uh, or even just driving the car around downtown and owning a right-hand drive car, you just hear, you know, you'll hear somebody as you drive by, especially because my car doesn't have any AC. So I always had the windows down and, you know, you drive past somebody and you hear them say to their friend, you know, is that a British car or is that, you know, whatever. 
And it gives the opportunity when, when you have the opportunity to stop, like at one of these car shows and somebody asks you a question, you know, is this a British car? And then, you know, you can start, spark up a conversation. Not everybody needs to have the information of, you know, the specifications of your engine or you don't need to know everything about your car in order to have a good conversation. Some of my best conversations have actually come from people who have no idea about the car at all, who are just extremely interested because they love the look of it. My fourth point for uh, SW20 ownership, my fourth pro, uh, is that the SW20 is a great mid-range car. The low-end torque is nothing to write home about, and the top end, it tends to taper off. But it has the perfect balance of mid-range to allow it to be an extremely fun, you know, weekend car, back road car, uh, and it's the most fun that I've ever had in the back roads of Newfoundland. It does okay in the hairpins and it holds its own on the straights, but when you get the SW20 into a long swooping turn and you can feel the car settle back as it accelerates, uh, it's really one of the best feelings uh, to have in a sports car just in general. I, I absolutely love it. Of course it's on the list. It's number five. I put it here because it wouldn't be an SW20 video without talking about them. Pop-up headlights speak for themselves. When you're driving down the highway in an SW20 and you look out the tiny rear window to see the louvered engine cover and, you know, the wing that blocks most of your view, and then you flip up your headlights and maybe cruise to your favorite M83 tune and you feel like the guy from the Kavinsky music videos driving a Ferrari Testarossa. It's really... An awesome feeling and that's pretty much all I have to say about that um, I think that speaks for itself you need to drive one you need to drive a car with pop-up headlights in order to understand why it feels so good so that's my five pros for the SW20 MR2 moving on to the cons uh, a lot of people are going to disagree with my first one but I don't like the styling in the eyes of most JDM car enthusiasts it is a uh, beautiful artistic marvel uh, but when you take a step back it's actually kind of a nugget <laughs> um, when you compare it to its contemporary counterparts like you know the Supra or the 3000 GT or even the you know big Maxima of, of a Skyline the SW20 is kind of disproportionate it feels awkward to look at um it's a little bit too narrow uh, in comparison to its other, you know, JDM brethren. And it kind of only has a couple of angles in which it actually looks good. It is almost always too high uh, with a bit really awkward posture. It's raked, but not in the cool street machine way. Uh, and unless you look at it from either side profile or a rear three quarter profile, uh, which the car photographs at really well, and most of the photos you see of SW20s are usually from that angle. Uh, it really just looks a little dinky. It's definitely not a perfect from every angle car, but I don't think it's completely ugly. Uh, I just think that it's not my favorite style choice from Toyota. So not a complete negative, but m mostly for me, I, I don't love it, especially when you compare it to some of the other things Toyota's putting out around the same time. Uh, I couldn't actually think of five full things, so this second one is uh, is one that's particular to my car specifically, and there's not many people that are going to be able to relate to it. But my car had no AC. Um, when I bought it, all the AC plumbing and everything had already been removed, uh, so it wasn't really an option for me to put it back. It wasn't feasible at all. Uh, the car always stayed cool, but man, I was a sweaty boy, and I hated that. If if I could have gotten AC back, that would have been nice. Granted, I drove it in Newfoundland specifically, so I only needed it about two or three days out of the year, but it still sucked. Uh, yeah, so that's point number two. Again, not really applicable to everybody, but definitely a pain in the butt. Point number three is the space, which I think everybody knew was coming. 
Uh, and while it doesn't seem like a huge con, uh, it's what makes the SW20 the hardest to live with. Uh, so I bought the car originally as a fun weekend car, but like I said, uh, it quickly transitioned to me driving it every day. I'm a pretty light packer, but it was really only meant to hold maybe like a bag or two. And what is like a reliable Toyota, if not the perfect car to take on a road trip? Uh, granted, I didn't really take it on any spectacular, you know, multi-thousand kilometer road trips or anything, but I did take the car between uh, where I was working and where I uh, am from, which is about, grand total, about 700, 750 kilometers total. And I did that about once a month, I'm going to say, and with no AC and only enough cargo space for about one bag, uh, it wasn't too bad, but then... There was a time when I had to take a spare tire with me and I had a jack in the back of the car because I just bought new tires uh, and I was bringing the spare home to put in the shed. And uh, I had to do this. So as you can see, the my bag that I had is on the floor because the full size jack is in the trunk. The frunk had you know, a, a small little dinky spare. And then this was my spare tire that I was bringing in case something bad happened. Luckily, it never did, uh, but you know you can never be too careful. Next point that I'm going to make for cons is that the car has no cup holders. And I know I mentioned in the pros category that uh, the interior you know is really great and I love it. But what was with you know 90s Japan and not putting cup holders in cars or putting like one cup holder in a car? Even one I'd be okay with, but the SW20 comes with none. Um, I'll keep this one short and sweet because, like I said, it was just like a, supposed to be a weekend car, and for most people it is just a weekend car, but having no cup holders blows. Uh, of course, you can buy aftermarket cup holders. Uh, I just can't decide on one that won't soak me <laughs> when I take it into a back road, you know, and, and really get on throttle, uh, especially on Newfoundland roads. They're notoriously bad. That's pretty much all I have to say about cup holders. I, I think that, you know, that one speaks for itself. My next and final con uh, is going to be one that, you know, is a bit more generic. It's not really specific to me. But the SW20 is a difficult car to work on. And, you know, getting into any Japanese car, it's going to be difficult to work on. They were built extremely tight. But the SW20 stands out above the rest when it comes to its difficulty to work on. I think it's only fair to mention this uh, because of how many people are buying them as maybe like a first project or a project where they may not have access to like a lift and they may just be using a standard car jack. Um, but the SW20s have zero room to work in the engine bay. Pretty much every inch of that engine bay is taken up with some tech that Toyota thought would be perfectly fine because nobody would ever try to tinker with their cars apparently. Uh, and most of even the small items require the car to be lifted into the air. If you want to take the engine out, you basically need a lift uh, because the engine has to come out through the bottom and good luck doing that just in a driveway. If you do choose to do it in a driveway or you know, if you have the means, you believe that you can, uh, it is going to require some patience, some creativity, and uh, probably a lot of swearing. Luckily for me, though, uh, I never really had to deal with any of these issues because uh, my experience, like I said, was pretty positive. But uh, this video is about the MR2, so it's certainly worth noting. And I think it would just be unfair for me not to mention that this is a huge con for a lot of people. That being said, those are my five pros and cons of... Uh, of SW20 ownership. If I missed anything, if you guys uh, own an SW20, uh, let me know in the comments, you know, what you think your uh, pro or con is that, that I may have missed. And uh, please feel free to subscribe. Uh, I'm going to have a video also uh, with the pros and cons and some of the history of my uh, AW11. It's a supercharged swap that I've recently uh, started to learn the history on. Uh, the original builder actually contacted me not long ago and I've been getting the history on it and I'm going to hopefully make a video talking about it and I think it's going to be really really interesting and I hope you stick around for it okay thank you very much uh like and subscribe thanks